Manx Radio's update with Dave Moore. Master Mai, good evening. Welcome along to Update. It's five o'clock time for your daily roundup of news on, in and around the Isle of Man. Coming up in the next half hour. A local charity threatened with closure receives a lifeline. We'll hear how one man's fight against one of the island's power suppliers fared in court. Plus, is it the end of the road for a pub popular with Manx travellers? That's all coming up in the next half hour. But first of all, the update news headlines with Siobhan Fletcher. Fast am I. Fast am I. A local charity that helps people live independently looks to have received a lifeline after reporting it would have to close at the end of the month. Live at Home, which has around 500 service users, says it's in talks with an individual benefactor, which could mean the charity can press on immediately with a planned restructuring programme to enable it to maintain a basic service. A serving police sergeant has been suspended from duty after being accused of failing to provide a breath sample. 48-year-old Stephen Kenneth Hall of Balaf appeared at Douglas Courthouse on the 8th of August. He's entered a not guilty plea to the offence, which was allegedly committed on the 6th of July at police headquarters. FC Isle of Man's manager says he and his players are keen to bounce back from defeat at the weekend when they return to the NWCFL Premier Division action tonight. The Manx side travel to the SMS Pro Soccer Park to face newly promoted FC St Helens at 7.45 this evening. Further afield, a 32-year-old man's appeared in court charged with an attempted murder after an 11-year-old girl was stabbed in London's Leicester Square. Prosecutors say the victim will likely need plastic surgery and remains in hospital. The sentencing of a man who looted three shops, including a Lush in Hull, has been delayed as a court heard he'd asked a probation officer if he wanted his autograph. Prosecutors say 25-year-old John Honey played a prominent role in recent violence. And £10 million was spent in shops on beer alone on the day of England's Euros final with Spain. Meanwhile, the Paris Olympics opening ceremony saw a 60% increase in the sale of nuts. There are your headlines. I'll be back with your news at 6. Manx Glass and Glazing can supply and install single, double and triple glazing. Call 674 573 or visit the showroom on the Snugborough Trading Estate. See the island like you've never seen it before on an incredible chauffeur-driven trike tour. A unique way to make memories that will last a lifetime. Give vouchers available too. See iomtriketours.com for details and booking. One architectural design company has particular expertise in achieving planning approval for a wide variety of projects, from landmark buildings to spectacular homes. Talk to the experts at Ellis Brown and get your project off the ground. For excellence in design, search Ellis Brown. Your business can grow its market share four times faster. Be heard by over 43,000 island adults over 13 weeks. Call us on 682 600. Manx Radio is proud to support Manx businesses and communities. Firestone Rubber Roof Shop for one-piece flat roofing systems. No joins, no leaks. We also line commercial box gutters in one piece up to 60 metres with a 20-year written warranty against leakage. Call Rubber Roof Shop on 49667. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. A local charity that helps people live independently looks to have received a lifeline after reporting it would have to close at the end of the month. Live at Home had told its members it was planning to cease operations due to financial reasons at the end of August. Now, though, after intervention from an unnamed individual, things don't look quite so bleak. David Gorn is the chair of the charity. I have been approached by a a local resident um, who is looking to make a significant um, contribution towards our um, restructuring appeal, which would enable us to um, to move forward. Um, obviously, this this is exceptionally good news for us, and it's something which we we did want to share with with our service users, who obviously will be in some cases quite alarmed by the news they've received. Um, the situation at the end of last week was, was looking bleak, but we now have um, cautious optimism that we will be able to deliver a uh, a basic service. It will not be exactly what we've done in the past, 
but it will what be delivered when we first started 27 years ago and which will provide support to um, most of our 500 service users. How will it be in terms of jobs? I mean, there was talk this morning of 10 jobs having to go. Will that still be the case? Yeah, our our restructuring plan uh, saw five jobs being made available in the future. Uh, There's no way that, um, you know, we can afford to run with the structure that we had previously. uh, And unfortunately, we will have to let um, some staff go. But there will be uh, the opportunities for for about half the staff to to undertake a slightly different role, because obviously uh, the way we've got this, the, the roles are not the same. The roles have changed but there will be opportunities for people to, um, to, uh, to, to stay on board. Now, if all goes well, what kind of timescale are we talking, David, for the changes to be implemented? Well, we're meeting with the, um, the party concerned early next week, and we've always said that if we could get this to work, we would love to make it fairly seamless and to, uh, to try and run the reduced service with effect from early September. David Gorn, the chair of the charity Live at Home, talking to our reporter Simon Richardson. A Santon man has been awarded more than £1,000 after a court ruled Isle of Man Energy, formerly known as Manx Gas Limited, breached its contract by cutting off his gas supply. Siobhan Fletcher joins me with the details now. Siobhan, what do we know? Yeah, Dave. So David Andrew Brown saw his gas supply terminated on the 15th of August last year. As there were children in the house with one aged five, he argued the disconnection left a vulnerable family without gas. He took the company to court requesting his home be reconnected. He argued the disconnection was unlawful and he applied for damages for breach of contract. He alleged that he had to resort to more expensive forms of energy to heat his home, encountered a loss of earnings and that there was damage to his house because of damp. All right, so what did Manx Gas Limited say then in response? Well, Manx Gas argued that the disconnection was lawful due to Mr Brown's non-payment of invoices over the previous 11 months. He had an outstanding gas bill of over £3,000, with the company counterclaiming for that amount. They say he was sent a letter warning of disconnection on the 17th of July, which referred to his account number and the arrears against his name. And did Mr Brown give a reason for not paying? So the crux of this case is that it all comes down to branding. Manx Gas Limited rebranded to Isle of Man Energy, you might remember, in September 2022. And Mr Brown spent significant time in his defence explaining the difficulty for customers regarding the new invoices making no mention of Manx Gas. Essentially, it was alleged that when the company rebranded, it relied on press releases rather than informing each individual customer of the change. Basically, invoices referred to the new trading name but made no mention of the old name. So Mr Brown essentially said he didn't trust the invoices he was receiving as he didn't know about the rebrand. He said his non-payment of gas was not as a result of fuel poverty, but as a result of a lack of confidence in Manx Gas Limited's accounting procedures and the validity of the bills he was receiving. So Siobhan, what we all want to know is what was the final outcome of the case? Well, he took the company to court for breach of contract, claiming for the cost of portable heaters, additional energy costs, rectification even of damp and general damages for inconvenience. In his judgment, Deemster John Needham awarded Mr Brown a total of £4,610, but he also awarded Manx Gas £3,278.94, therefore offsetting Mr Brown's total awarded damages. It basically all means that he'll receive £1,331.06 from the company. We have, of course, contacted Isle of Man Energy for comment. Thank you, Siobhan. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. The Chief Minister says he's desperately disappointed over the handling of potential future development of Jerby Airfield. Alfred Cannon and Airport Director Gary Cobb were among the attendees at a public meeting which was called by Germany commissioners last night. A map in the draft North and West Area Plan shows an increased area for a runway. It's something which has now been removed from the document. Like everybody else, and they've been freely acknowledged, this should have been handled in a much better way in terms of the engagement that was required for people who were potentially infected by what is only a proposal. Right, so it's not a definitive proposition and of course as it is part of the area plan process it's been very much handled in an independent manner of course it's right that uh, these these processes take place without political interference the po- political piece comes much later down the line when we start voting on the proposals that are put 
um, before us. But yes, I'm desperately di disappointed that it wasn't handled in a in a better way. And of course, um, as Tim Johnston said, and I wholeheartedly agree. You know, I'm sorry for the anxiety that has caused people in the constituency. Um, but the important thing, it's been lifted out of the area plan now. Uh, the DOI are withdrawing it, and then we need to wait until uh, whatever documentation is presented as part of airport master planning. We have no plans for an airport in Jerby. All we were looking to do was purely to safeguard a site should there ever be need at Ronald's Way. Um, there's a 1.5 metre runway at Jerby, 60-70% um, of passengers that land at Ronald's Way land on a plane that wouldn't be able to land here. We think it would be prudent to safeguard aviation on the island and that's why we look at Jerby. As part of the master plan, again, this will be looked at and we spoke. I hope it brings comfort, but with houses being so um, personal and, and people being having such an impact on people, um, I can understand that even though having tried to assure them, that people will still have questions. But hopefully with engagement with the master plan, that will, will come out and we can maintain a, a better dialogue with anybody who feels that there is an impact. But members of the public who turned out in force last night weren't impressed. I think what we've learned tonight is that a monumental cock-up happened and it shouldn't have happened and the damage that has been caused because of that to people's property values, to people's mental health and well-being is monumental and it's um, it cannot be justified. I still have a lot of questions that need answering, mainly around that I still don't understand the necessary reason to safeguard this land. I know we live in the modern world at the moment where things are changing around the world but I still don't understand the length of the runway that's proposed. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. It's huge. It's pretty much the same size as the failed Gatwick 2 proposal. Why does the Isle of Man need this level of safeguarding for that length of runway? I've spoken independently to an, an estate agent on the island and I know that our property values from them professionally have already been reduced until this proposal ceases to exist. So what we've done now is we're having to live with this blight. We also have to wait for this master plan. Finally, like compulsory purchase, which is what will happen if they want to build this runway where they've suggested. They only have to give us 21 days notice to get out of our house and they give us market value at the time. They haven't followed due process as we've established, even though that some of them think they're experts in that field. And they haven't actually been transparent. They haven't engaged us. So, you know, my expectations are pretty low for this airport master plan. You're listening to Manx Radio. This is Update. And now, after suffering their first defeat of the new season at the weekend, FC Isle of Man are in action again tonight, away at FC St Helens. The Ravens manager, Paul Jones, says it's time to deliver a positive response. I think that goes without saying, doesn't it, Rob? But yeah, probably looking for, for everyone to build things even even more than they did on Saturday, really, and finish off the good play that we had with, with a little bit more incisive finishing and a little few more bodies into the box and yeah just a bit more than we saw on Saturday because we'll need to do that against an FC St Kellens teams that you know, off the back of a promotion will be wanting to show everyone how good they are so yeah I fully expect a, a reaction if that's the right word to, to not coming away with the three points on Saturday you know they're one of the teams that we don't know very much about and there's not a lot of kind of video highlights out there on the on the internet to, to find out so you know they're a little bit of an unknown which gives them a, a competitive advantage to a certain extent but we've got to there was kind of Steve said before the game we're not worry too much about the opposition make sure we do our jobs as, as well as we possibly can and you know I think if we do that we've got more than enough to, to beat every team in our league but um, the challenge in itself is to, is to deliver those levels on a consistent basis. Just going a little bit back to the weekend just gone what were the kind of general feelings amongst the players after the result? I'm trying to think how to phrase it so as it doesn't come across in, in a way that I don't want it to but it, look, you, you're going to lose games of football at this level of football disappointed we lost at 100% and we're very frustrated that we lost but it's okay you're going to lose games that you deserve to win and you're going to win games that you probably didn't deserve to win that's going to happen for a season and if you overreact when you lose then that's as bad as overreacting when you win and getting too kind of cocky and confident so it was actually a really encouraging reaction by the players after the game and now it's a case of making sure that we maintain those kind of confidence levels that we've still got and, and don't let the lack of points on the table kind of detract us from what we're attempting to do there's 43 more games left of the season that game can't and won't define the next 43 and certainly won't define how we go about our business tonight 
A quick look at some of the uh, business headlines this evening on update. Grocery price inflation has risen in the UK for the first time in more than a year, but this didn't stop shoppers splashing out on booze to celebrate a summer of sport, according to new figures. Wine sales were up 35% on the day of the Olympic opening ceremony, with 4.6 million uh, bottles sold, alongside £10 million worth of beer bought on the day of the Euro football final, according to market research firm Cantar. And that came despite a 1.8% rise in grocery price inflation in the four weeks to August, 0.2% higher than the prior four weeks. And the rate of supermarket price rises had previously fallen for 17 months in a row. Cantar said. And the boss of Starbucks is leaving the company after less than two years in charge as the coffee chain looks for a fix for its flagging sales. The chief executive stepping down and will be replaced. The head of Mexican grill chain Chipotle, the company said. The shake-up comes as Starbucks is grappling with a slump in sales amid a backlash to price increases and boycotts sparked by the Israel-Gaza war. I'm running late again. Do you know where I put my car keys? In the fridge. Where's my phone? Under the dog basket. Bye. You haven't forgotten that we're seeing Ramsey Cook all later? Oh, uh, no, of, of course not. Um, 5pm, is it? Caught it a free. I'll be there. Life is busy. That's why Ramsey Crookall's team takes time to help you make a mindful investment decision. Considering all the options, giving you full control of your financial future. Less stress, more assurance. Forgot to put my shoes on. Oh. See how we can make your money work for you. Call 717171 or visit ramseycrookall.com. Licensed and regulated by the Isle of Man Financial Services Authority. So it's time for the market report supplied by Ramsey Crookall. And UK and European stocks closed higher as market participants monitored a fresh batch of economic data following last week's volatility. The yen remained weak. The dollar softened against the rest of its peers in karma trading as markets await US inflation data. Oil prices edged lower as markets refocused on concerns about demand after OPEC. Yes. Yesterday cut its forecast for demand growth in 2024 due to softer expectations in China. And gold prices fell as investors locked in profits after the metal closed at an all-time high in the previous session and ahead of bets around the Federal Reserve's monetary policy path. So on to the markets. The FTSE 100, 8235, that's up 0.3%. While the Dow Jones is at 39,554, that's up 0.5%. The Nasdaq's at 17.066, that's up 1.7%. The exchange rates, the pound against the dollar, 1.282, and against the euro, 1.170. On to commodities, gold is at 2,468 US dollars, down 0.13%, while Brent is at 80.86 US dollars, that's down 1.4%. You're listening to the Isle of Man's quintessential daily news and current affairs roundup. Update on Manx Radio. For decades, it was the last stop off for many travellers before stepping onto the Liverpool ferry and heading home to the Isle of Man. Now, it looks like a pub which holds a place in many Manx hearts has finally closed its doors for good. Simon Richardson reports. For almost 150 years, the pig and whistle has been a regular haunt for many folk with time to kill before boarding the steam packet ferry home. The pub's future has been in question in recent years and last month it seemed it had closed its doors for good. Based on the corner of Covent Garden and Chapel Street, close to the pier head on Liverpool's waterfront, its owners are reportedly reviewing their options. The building has a long history, having been a boarding house and a brothel before it became a pub in 1875. It was known as the Peg and Wassail and was popular not just with steam packet passengers, but also sailors setting off for the New World. It seemed the establishment's future was secure when it was renovated in 2019 by the independent leaseholder. They took the decision to close the business, though, a few weeks ago. It's owned by Heineken Star Pubs, and a statement from the chain says they're reviewing their options, but for the meantime, it will remain closed. Its reliance from passengers travelling to the Isle of Man lessened recently with the introduction of the new steam packet ferry terminal a short distance further along the Mersey River. Manx Radio Travel, driven by Keyside Tyres and Service Centre. Thank you, Simon. So we'll start with uh, the steam packet ferry sailings and uh, the Mananin is due into Liverpool at 25 to 7. The Mananin will then leave at quarter past seven and get into Douglas at 10 o'clock. Uh, the Manxman is due to arrive in from Hesham this evening at five past six. On to the airport. 
and so far everything looks to be on time in terms of departures and also uh, arrivals to the island this evening as well and no major disruption on the roads however a reminder that the mountain road is due to close this evening at half past six uh, until no later than 10 p.m to complete the work that it started last year the closure will be between Barul Park Ramsey and Craig Nabar Ask how you can spread the cost interest-free at Keyside. Did you catch the northern lights last night? The aurora borealis was spotted in the skies over the island, particularly in the north in the early hours. Howard Parkin, chairman of the Isle of Man Astronomical Society, missed the light show himself, but he says there's every chance we'll see them again tonight if the skies are clear. No, unfortunately, I didn't get to see any aurora last night. I know there was forecast. There's been lots of activity on the sun at the moment, and there will continue to be. So please don't think if you've missed it, you're not going to see it again. We've got lots of activity on the sun as the sun is at its maximum period of activity every 11 years. So the chance of us seeing aurora are quite high. And the best time to see the aurora is at the time of the equinoxes. So the middle of September, 21st of September, 21st of March. To have seen aurora recently, when we've only just got past what we call astronomical twilight, when the sky's only just really getting dark around midnight time, is spectacular. All the while as well, a meteor shower going on. Is that right? Is that dying off a bit now, though? It is dying off now. The Persid meteor shower peaks on the 12th, 13th, which was last night and the night before. Unfortunately, I managed to see a couple of faint ones. We didn't have particularly good weather. What you really need with a meteor shower is clear skies, the whole sky being totally clear. And we did have quite a bit of cloud around last night, especially around midnight. I looked out and lots of patchy cloud around. Fortunately, there wasn't much cloud on the northern horizon, which is why we got to see the aurora. But the Persids, always one of the best. And uh, I always tell people, if you go outside, you're always guaranteed to see a meteor if it's clear. Well, I saw about two or three faint ones. And I know a few other people reported seeing some really bright ones, especially in the southern sky. So well away from the radiant point. So keep looking, keep looking at the sky over the next few days. But it has gone past the peak. But we'll look forward now to the next next major shower we've got a whole host of showers coming up later in the year but the next best one or sometimes argued the best one is the geminids in the middle of december which i'll no doubt be talking about to your listeners nearer the time good luck folks if you're looking to see the northern lights this evening you're listening to max radio this is update and peel commissioners say they're continuing to evaluate their options for playground provision in the west it's after claims the local authority is planning to remove close keg in red necronk Parents are urging people to contact the authority to push the notion of improving, not removing the playground. A notion supported by the chief executive of Isle of Man Play, or Isle of Play, I should say, Chris Gregory. The AstroTurf is starting to curl up, the play equipment has lost its swings and the fence has got holes in. But what's actually happened is quite ironic to the fact that it started to get worse in condition is that more children have started playing there. And there are local children there that populate that area every day. And it's brilliant. I walk past it on a regular basis and it's just lovely to see the children out there playing in it. I think it says an awful lot about sort of how children play, about what interests children and what influences children's play. Because a generic piece of play equipment doesn't necessarily tick the boxes for them. But when it's actually started to to take on their own development, so the, the fence has a hole in it, for example, well, that's a place where the children sort of run in and out of it. And it's these children in this area have taken it on. It's completely theirs and it's so, so popular. Now, when you saw the social media post I know yours was one of the first posts where you said I will try and stand by the community I will try and contact the commissioners have you done that I have spoken to one of the um, one of the commissioners who has said that they will try and put the work on hold there's, like I said, there's a lot of children that use that area. The parents are obviously very fond of that. Um, and we had a conversation just before about how um, parents can, can see their children access that space. It's a very quiet road. What should be happening now should be a conversation with those residents about the reasons why, at least let them know why, uh, and then talk to the children about what it is and what their opinions are on this as well. So there's little signs that the children have put up now saying, save my playground, save my... It's got its own name. It's really taken on its own identity. Time now for sport with Rob Pritchard, Fastamai. 
Fast am I. Well, we're going to start things uh, with cycling. And Manx Pro cyclists Becky Story and Lizzie Holden have been taking part in a doubleheader of racing on day two of the 2024 Tour de France Femme. Both contested this morning's second stage, covering 67 kilometres from Dordrecht to Rotterdam, with Story helping her team DSM Fermanic Post NL teammate Charlotte Cool take the stage win. Meanwhile, Holden's UAE team ADQ managed a highest finish of 16th through Italian competitor Severe Berted Solo. Well, this afternoon, meanwhile, has seen the stage three time trial take place around Rotterdam. Holden finished strong in 28th place, only 23 seconds behind winner Demi Vollering, while Story was one minute and one second back. Tomorrow's fourth stage will see the competitors take on a 122km route from Valkenburg and across the border into Belgium to Liège. That'll start at around 11.25am UK time on Wednesday. Elsewhere, Keith Ward and Di Neal have been crowned winners of this year's Isle of Man Senior Championships in Isle of Man Golf. It comes after 140 players aged between 50 and 70 took to the course at Mount Murray Golf Club on Sunday in sunny conditions. Elsewhere in the staple for classes, Ramsey's Neil Atkinson and Shelley Price of Port St Mary topped the pile in the 50-59 to 59 age group. Uh, meanwhile, Ward of Mount Murray and Rowney's Claire Humphrey-Jones were men's and women's winners respectively for the 60-69 to 69 age group. Finally, Rowney scooped both the male and female prizes in the over-70s category, courtesy of Alan Guy and Julie Heal. And finally, organisers of the Parish Walk have confirmed a new record has been set during this year's event. Well, during the 2024 race, held from the 22nd to the 23rd of June, Jeff Hain became the oldest competitor to finish the gruelling challenge within 24 hours. Mr Hain was 77 years and 10 months old on race day and crossed the line in 125th place in a time of 23 hours, 41 minutes and 1 second. Officials are describing Mr Hain's effort as a truly remarkable achievement and a fantastic accomplishment. Just before you go, Rob, we've got about 30 seconds left. Uh, we heard earlier about FC Isle of Man. Any news ahead of tonight's game? Well, very brief, because this is, in fact, the first meeting between the two sides ever. FC Isle of Man, of course, their second season, sorry, their third season, I should say, in the NWCFL Premier Division. FC St. Helens were champions of the league below NWCFL Division 1 North last season as well, both looking to bounce back from defeats last weekend. Thank you very much, Rob. We wish FC Isle of Man all the best of luck. That's it for Update for this evening.